Hey everyone, this is Katie with Kindred Soul Art and as promised, today we are doing bubbles and I'm gonna show you the other bubble method. I have one other one on my channel uh, that uses negative painting. This one's a little bit different, but I'll walk you through how I approach it and you can decide for yourself which one you like better. So uh, what you'll need is some watercolor paper, watercolor paints. Today I'm gonna be using uh, this is phthalo blue, this is indigo, this is an aqua green, and this is a uh, like golden yellow, which is kind of fun. So I'll probably also pull in some other colors from my other palette uh, to give some body and depth to the bubbles. We'll see what happens when we get there. <laughs> and then the other paint that you'll need is some metallic uh, watercolor. I actually don't have metallic watercolors, so I'm a big proponent of using what you have. So this is actually face paint, professional face paint, because uh, I was a face painter before and that's just what I have. And uh, so if you actually make watercolors or have a brand that you would love to send me to try, I would love to try it out and compare um, and show you how it um, stacks up against the face paint. Okay, uh, you also need a white gel pen and some bleed proof white, along with the bleed proof white. I have this little dabber <laughs> that sticks on your finger. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Uh, let's see, can't remember if I already said it, but paint or uh, painter's tape will help give you a border if that's what you want. I didn't put a border on this one, um, and it's really up to you what you like best for that. And then, you don't have to have a stencil, but it's gonna make your life 100 times easier if you do have round stencils. You can make your own out of paper and just cutting circles in the paper, but this really does make your life a lot easier and faster if that is what you are after. And then of course you'll need brushes and your water and maybe an old rag to wipe off excess water and paint. I think that's it. So I'm going to start with taping down my paper. And you'll notice um, as I go through this um, tutorial that I might do things a little bit different than you see in this um, example one. And part of that is because I rarely paint <laughs> the same thing. I'm always looking for um, new ways to do things and new techniques and I just love exploring and uh, experimenting. And uh, I found in one of the other bubble pieces that I did some fun additions that you can make to the background. Uh, and actually, I, I don't have that bubble piece with me today because it's on display actually, which is kind of fun. It's uh, on display with the mini exhibit that I started. But I still have this other example that I can show you and we will do together. Okay, one last painter's tape line here. And I'm just eyeballing this. One uh, trick that you can use to help eyeball it easier, it's Still not perfect but in the corners you try and get a square so you can see I did a little bit better on that one than this one this one's gonna be a little bit off but that's okay for me I'm pretty easy going about um, having to have all the edges perfect and stuff I think it kind of adds something extra when it's not exactly perfect okay so I'm gonna grab a paintbrush and in this first step, what you're gonna do is you want a pretty dark background. And so you're gonna be doing um, a few different layers of paint in order to get that darker background. So I'm just gonna wet this paper so I can get a little bit better flow with the paint. Then I'm gonna grab, let's see, let's start with some of that golden yellow and I'm just gonna drop it in the middle here. And what I'm gonna aim for in this one is I'm gonna have a little bit darker towards the top and a little bit darker towards the bottom, but the um, but a smaller proportion of dark towards the top, if that makes sense. 
And if it doesn't, hopefully it'll become more clear as we go. Okay, I'm gonna drop in some of my aqua green. Mix some up here. You can see I'm pulling up a little bit farther into this yellow um, and that's just because when I'm putting the bubbles down, if this is too light, the bubbles aren't going to show up very well. So that's why I'm pulling in maybe a little bit farther there. Okay, some up here. Yeah, da 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 da. Okay, and I'm going to grab some of the phthalo blue that I have. Drop that in. Okay, now I'm going to grab some indigo. goes down in the corner. Okay. So now I'm just going to play a little bit and um, add in some interesting shapes and swirls and make the background a little bit more dynamic. So let me pull in some color here. And some color here. And to get um, a little bit darker color, you can drop in more layers. And I'm still not quite sure the best ratio at certain time points. I'm still discovering more about, you know, the paper and um, how to make the best use of timing with the paper as it dries. But as it dries, you still have a chance to layer some of it. And you're going to get even darker layers if you wait to layer until the first one, first layer dries. Okay, now I'm going to take, this is a little fan brush. It's super fun because you can add some fun little textures. But I'm just going to go through and swish things around a little bit. And you can see it's a little bit lighter there, so I'm going to add just a little bit more up here. Okay, now I am going to let this 
dry. So I'm going to grab my hair dryer and um, I'm going to dry this real quick. I'll turn off the sound so you're not blown away. Uh, and then we'll do one more quick layer on top of this one. Oh, and real quick, I noticed it has a pretty good sheen on it right now as it's drying. So I want to show you one other trick that you can do to add some texture. And that is getting some of your water and then just dropping it on. Uh, once it's at a medium sheen, you can see how I'm getting some texture through here. You can also add salt if you want to yours. Makes it fun and it adds a little bit more texture. Okay, going back to drying. Dokey. that should be about dry now so you can see how much lighter this dried uh, than when it was wet so a lot of people will still continue on with their painting here but you can add a lot more richness and depth to your background by adding a second layer so that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back in and um, I'm going to add another layer of color And it doesn't super matter how specific you are on this um, background layer because as you add more um, bubbles and stuff to the rest of the painting, um, it'll cover up a lot of the background, but just having it there does give a lot of added depth to your painting. That's something that I really do love about doing the bubbles is uh, they're so forgiving, I feel like, compared to, you know, a very specific face or an object or, I don't know, some, something along those lines, something else that you're painting. Um, there's just so much freedom that you have with making mistakes or um, exploration that you can do with the background especially. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually lifting a little bit of paint just to get some interesting, again, texture in the back. spot here and a lot of this is going to be covered up so if you don't love it don't worry about it it's going to be okay <laughs> this is very forgiving and then I'm going to dry it just a little bit and then add some of those same water spots that I did the first time okay now I'm adding some water spots they're not going to show up as well this time because uh, it is the second layer. I 
it's looking kind of fun though. It looks like this is still a little bit light for me, so I'm going to add a little bit of extra paint just in this corner. Just to help that along. Okay, and back to drying. Okay, so now our painting is nice and dry. So we're gonna move on to the next stage, um, which is gonna be adding little um, bokeh circles. And bokeh is a photography effect where you get the little circles in the background. And I find that adding it to the bubbles helps give it some of that champagne, joyful type feel, uh, which is, I think, really fun. This one doesn't have it because that's something I discovered later on, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. So uh, what you're gonna need is your stencil, your circle stencil. You're gonna need your finger dauber, which is so perfect for doing this. And then um, you'll need some bleed proof white. And this is um, really ideal for this project. Uh, but if you don't have bleed proof white, you can also use um, white gouache. I wouldn't recommend using white acrylic on this uh, just because it, when acrylic dries, it's harder to blend. And after bleed proof white dries, you still have a chance to blend it in. And using some of that blending and fading is really helpful on doing these bubbles. So get out your bleed proof white, your dauber, and your stencil. And um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a few bubbles um, on this layer. And then after we do some bubbles, we'll go back in and add some more. I'm gonna open up my bleed proof white. And the key to these daubers is water control. Uh, if you get too much water, then it'll bleed through the outside of the stencil and you won't get the coverage that you want. If there's too little, then it's gonna end up a little bit drier and it's better to have too little water than too much. So what you're gonna do, pull this water over a little bit so you can see it. You're gonna just barely dip your uh, dauber in and then you're going to press it down a little bit on a surface just to get the water throughout the dauber. Okay. Then you're going to pull up some of the bleed proof white. Okay, and then I'm gonna test how thick this is by um, looking at it on my palette. So I can see that there's quite a bit of water in this. And so I'm gonna need more, a little bit more bleed proof white to make this thicker. So I'm gonna go back in, get more of my bleed proof white. And that's looking a little bit better. Okay. I'm going to place, let's do this circle, place my uh, stencil. And then um, when you first put it down, it's easier to dab it. So instead of squishing it around at first, um, you're gonna get better edges if you dab. This part also helps you see if you have too much water. So I have quite a bit of water on this. It'll be okay. Um, but starting in the middle and then going towards the outside is going to help me uh, see if I have too much water and if it'll leak. So that's a pretty good coverage of um, that little bubble. So then I'm going to add another one. Just pat, 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 pat. All right, now uh, I'm gonna add another one except this one, now that my sponge is a little bit drier, not as much paint on it. Um, I'm gonna move my dauber in circles and so that it so that it pulls up some of the paint underneath, especially because I have a couple layers on this. It should pull up some of that paint, which allows you to get um, different colors. So let me show you what I mean. So this is another painting that I did um, using the same effect. And you can see with um, this circle, for example, it's much darker than the one behind it. 
Um, and that's because I pulled up some of the paint in a different area and then used, um, put it around in circles and um, it made it a, a little bit different color than the one underneath. So I'm gonna just pull this in circles. Okay, and that pulled up just a little bit. I need a little bit drier sponge. There we go. Moving in circles. So you can see that's a little bit different color than that one. Kind of hard to tell in the video. But you're just going to do a few of these circles. Then you can also freehand it. Um, this is especially nice if you don't have a stencil. And in that case, you're just going to move in little circles. So some of the circles you do want to fade out. You don't want a super hard edge on some of them and that will help give some of the fuzzy perspective that you need. Pulling up some nice color in this one. So because I have some of that color on my sponge already, I'm actually gonna go on the edge of this one and add a little circle on it so that you'll get some of that color. Okay, so I just realized my camera had stopped recording, <laughs> but hopefully it's fixed now. Um, you didn't miss much, uh, and I, I caught it pretty quick, but I just went in and was adding more of these um, little bokeh bubbles and varying the size as I added them. And then uh, we're starting the next stage now uh, where you will need a gel pen. I really like these Uniball Signo ones. I find that they're a little bit more reliable and more opaque than the Jelly Roll ones. Um, but you do you, use what you have. <laughs> and uh, you also need your stencil for this. And as you're making your circles, um, what you're going to want to avoid is just doing one thick circle of the gel pen, but break it up a little bit so that you have a few little gaps in your bubble, not all the same increments, but just uh, around the circle and that'll make it look a little bit more realistic as we add in some of the other things. So I'm going to add some more of my bubbles in of where I like them to be. As you're making your bubbles, you can overlap a few of them as you're going to um, make it look like they are on top of each other. So like this one here, I overlapped, or this one here. I tend to get carried away with <laughs> doing the bubbles. I just think they're so fun. And I almost always end up doing too many, but that is part of the fun of it. And so you just embrace, embrace the process. Okay, I think that'll be probably pretty good. Now I'm going to grab some of the paint that I used for the background and also grab a paintbrush. For this stage, you'll want um, a paintbrush that's a little less sharp. So you can see this one is kind of rounded on the end. You can grab a brush like this that's a little bit more round. At this stage, you'll want to avoid the more pointy ones like this one's really pointy, uh, which will be really useful later, but starting with these round ones is gonna help with um, getting a softer, whoo, softer uh, bubble shape. So I'm gonna grab, let's start with some of the darker sides. So I'm gonna grab um, my indigo or my phthalo blue, some of each, <laughs> whatever feels good. 
And I'm just gonna give a little background to this one. And you're gonna pick up some water and feed it out. And I'm using, as I'm getting less and less paint, I'm continuing to use that amount of paint on my brush to paint some of the other circles. For the uh, bubbles towards the bottom, uh, you'll want to go darker with how you fill it in and in the bubbles in the lighter section, you're gonna want to use a little bit lighter touch with the paint, at least you know, at the beginning. So I'm going straight indigo for this one. And the shapes that I'm making for the bubble stay in this kind of rounded uh, arena. So you don't want like square jig jags um, all through your bubbles, but rather that smooth um, pull with your brush. I'm adding the dark to not just the underside, but also a little bit to the upper side of the bubble. And you'll be doing a lot of layers of the color, so don't worry if it's not perfect. Grabbing more water and fading it. Bring some of this darker one. Mixing a little bit more thalo blue for the edge of this one. And grabbing water and fading it in. Adding water. You can already see how much dimension this is giving to these bubbles, which is really exciting. Well, I mean, exciting for me. I don't know. I'm kind of a nerd, so. <laughs> Whatever will make you joyful. The nice thing about watercolors when doing bubbles is they kind of lend themselves to um, making transparent things since the watercolor itself is transparent. So I just grabbed a little bit of uh, aqua green. That was, you can see how that was a little bit too dark for this one. So I'm gonna pull some of the color up. Add some of the dark indigo to the top of this one. And your bubbles are gonna be different. I'm just narrating out loud what I'm doing in case it is helpful for you. Okay, going down to these ones, and because it's in the dark area, again, you'll want to use the little bit uh, darker fill, darker paint to fill it in. Come 
coming back to this one now that this has dried a little bit you can see it dried a little bit lighter so I'm coming in with darker and I'm gonna pull in some of that golden yellow that I had used in the background and that'll look nice This one can get a little brown, brownish. Uh, if it's on too thick, you can kind of see on my palette when there's a lot of paint, it's more brownish. And I wanna keep more towards the lighter yellow rather than the brown. So I'm not gonna put the yellow on too thick. See how that one a little bit brown? So I'm gonna pull some of that up. And something with bubbles is um, you have lots of reflections going on. And so usually if you have color on one side, you're gonna have at least some little reflection on the other little side. So uh, for example, um, the darker color from down here is coming up and reflecting on the side of the bubble, but you also have, um, you know, the reflection on this side reflecting again to the bottom side and uh, so there's lots of ways that you can put the paint in again bubbles are pretty forgiving but just something I think about when I'm doing uh, when I'm pulling in the colors Almost done with this stage. And a little bit more yellow on this one. And maybe a little more yellow. Okay, so now I'm going to put in um, some other little colors as well to add some contrast. So if you get out a little color wheel, um, and you can look these up online, you don't have to have like an actual color wheel, um, but you can see in my background, I used a lot of these colors. So kind of yellow, green, blue, green, blue, violet, kind of stayed in this area. So I'm going to the opposite side of the color wheel and seeing some other colors that I can include that will help this pop. So I'm already using some of the yellow orange, as you can see with the, the golden color, um, which is part of what created the yellow green. Uh, and now I can pull from orange, red, red, violet. Those are probably the ones that I'm going to um, add to the bubbles to give it a, a lift. Let me grab my other palette here. my other very messy palette which I am completely open to <laughs> I you know I don't think that you have to be a perfect painter you don't have to have everything in order um I think finding a system that works for you is going to be more important than having you know all the best stuff or the best setup all of that okay so I'm going to pull some of this deeper red which is kind of like a purpley red. Let's see, right there. And I'm actually gonna pull in a little bit of purple while I'm at it. And maybe a little bit more purple. Mix in some of my phthalo blue that I used before just so I can have some of the same color undertones. More red, more purple, more red. <laughs> There we go, I think that is just about the color I am looking for. So I'm gonna go in and add some of that. I'm 
Again, rinsing off your brush and using your the um, clean brush to fade it. This one I'm going to leave sharp um, because when you look at um, a bubble, let me see if, if you can see this. When you look at a bubble, um, you have, well, and this is just a glass ball, but <laughs> the, the principles apply. Uh, so around the edges, things tend to get a lot stretchier and skinnier, uh, and then reflections on top tend to fade over if hopefully that makes sense. Um, and so one way to uh, improve your paintings is just observing bubbles around you. So go to the sink, make some bubbles and look at how the colors uh, move across it and uh, show up in those sink bubbles. And that can give you some good ideas for shapes that you'd like to use in your painting. and drop my brush, but don't worry. I am all about utilizing mistakes and just making it part of your process. So you see how um, I got some paint right there. I'm just gonna turn that into a bubble. And it looks like I got a few splatters, but that's okay because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn those into part of the painting. I'll just add some little colored splatters. Let's see, find one that's pretty close. And we'll make a little bubble here. Easy peasy. Okay, so in my, in my former life as a face painter, uh, you don't really have a chance to start over all the time you know, when you're painting a, a kid's face. And so it's really a helpful skill to take a mistake and work with it. So if you have a painting that, you know, it's just driving you crazy that you're working on, work with it a little bit longer and see if you can apply some creativity in uh, making it work. You can see how adding the purplish uh, brings out the other colors so much more. It's neat. Science is neat. Science of color. Okay, I gotta mix up a little bit more of that, that color here. maybe a little dark so I'm gonna lift some of the color so here's an example of where you can see how um, using the bleed proof white is gonna be helpful because when I went over this area it pulled some of that white around like that and you can see how that makes it look like it's a little bit more transparent and reflecting um the bubble behind it so i, I love using bleed proof white for these okay, i'm going to go in and add a little bit of orange as again one of those contrasting colors make it a softer orange all right let's see what's going right here and 
and I'm going to pull that color to fade it. You know, the orange could be a little bit brighter. It's kind of uh, brownish in, in my eyes, um, the way that it layered with the blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a little bit brighter yellow on top of that. There we go. That's better. Notice this one. So one of the tricks that you can do also when you're making bubbles is pay attention to where your eyes are drawn. And so I noticed as I'm scanning this, my eyes pull down to this area. So I'm gonna add a little bit darker to this area. And same thing when I scan again, my eyes are pulled over here, so I'm going to add some darker lines to this one. Okay, and now the part that's going to add a little bit more sparkle and that's going to be um, adding in more of the bleed proof white and gold. So now that you have these um, base colors down, bring out your bleed proof white again. And this time it's easier to have maybe a little bit sharper brush. This one is Probably a little bit too sharp, but it's fine for for me it'll work. But if you have one that's slightly less sharp, then it'll probably work a little bit better. So I'm gonna go in. And I like I really like adding some of the highlights towards the top. So I'm going to drag my brush a little bit. Rinse my brush and down and we'll go back in and add some extra sparkle to these adding more on the side one of the shapes that you can do with the white and with any color really is kind of a zigzaggy uh, around the edge. So I'll show you on this one. So it kind of zigzags around. And just using water to fade out as it feels appropriate. So I don't always know exactly why I choose a certain area to add paint to or to take paint away from. But part of that just comes from spending a lot of time observing uh, bubbles. And so uh, one trick that you can do as you are observing um, bubbles to get ideas is instead of strictly focusing on um, kind of a technical analysis of what you're looking at, try looking at it in terms of what it feels like. <laughs> so when looking at a bubble, try to, um, so if I'm looking at this, like, okay, try to memorize the feeling 
of what the shapes look like. I know that sounds kind of weird, <laughs> um, but I feel like it helps the um, your intuitive sense because you're relying more on feelings, which can store, in my mind, a, a lot more information than what you might be able to memorize um, in a more technical way. Okay, so here's another exa example of um, where the reflection coming down is also going to reflect a little bit more on the other side. So I'm going to add some um, highlight on this side as well. And fade out. One of the nice things about um, this gel pen as well, the, the Uniball one, is that uh, you can actually activate it with water and fade it like you do with bleed proof white. So let me see if I can get uh, show you an example here. So this corner, can you see how I'm fading that out? So if you don't have bleed proof white, you can also use your um, gel pen to make these markings and then use your paintbrush to um, soften the gel pen marks. I'm actually going to add one, um, a couple markings with my more rounded brush. And I feel like this edge is a little bit lost with the bokeh behind it. So I'm going to add um, a little bit darker paint um, around that edge. So playing in some of the purple, but also indigo on this one. So I feel like that'll give me a nice darker edge. And some of that red. That'll be nice. Make sure it's sufficiently dry <laughs> for putting it in and adding in that edge. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, and while I have the darker paint on my paintbrush, I'm going to go in and um, layer into some of that white that I put down. So you're getting layers on layers of um, paint that you're putting down. It's almost time to bring in my gold, my gold paint. Okay, now I'm going to pull in some of my gold, and as you put your gold down, you're going to kind of switch off between your gold and your bleed proof white or other colors if you want to bring them in. And that way they can kind of run into each other and fade into each other, which creates that 3D-ish look. Grab my gold paint. So now I'm going to pull across quite a bit of it. Around the side. It's are looking pretty schnazzy. 
If you don't love yours, that's okay. <laughs> um, sometimes it helps to keep going. Uh, there, there are so many times when I've been painting where I reach a certain point. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is never <laughs> going to work out. Um, it's like a little panic point in some of the paintings, especially commissions. Um, cause I want to, you know, make sure that people are getting good values for, you know, what the, what they're paying. And, uh, most of the time, if you keep going and, um, work with what you have, see it as a challenge of like, okay, I don't love this, but what can I do to make it better? What can I do to kind of shift this? And I found that that can, sometimes you're pleasantly surprised by how much you can fix uh, later down the road. I'm going back to my white. And this one ended up fading a little bit into a little bit more than I wanted into the darker background behind it. So I'm just going to go over it again. And now I'm just using my clean brush and looking for spots where I can mix and fade some of the sharper edges in. So like this one to me is too sharp. So I'm just going to soften that up, which is such a beautiful part of watercolor. Watercolor can be really unforgiving in many ways, but the ability it has to reactivate when wet is a gift. <laughs> it's a beautiful gift. Okay. I think I am coming to almost the end. I need a little bit more color up in here. So I'm going to add some of my aqua green. And like I said, your painting is going to be different. Um, your bubbles are going to look different than my bubbles or bubbles that someone else does. It's because we were using different paints and different brush strokes. And so even though I'm adding, um, paint in different places. You may not need to add paint there or you may need to add a little bit extra to a different spot and that's totally okay. Seemed a little bit dark to me so I'm gonna pull that in. And generally with the bubbles you want to stay rounder <laughs> with the marks that you make. So like I said earlier you don't want you know, zigzags across, but you kind of want to follow the general uh, rounded shape of the bubble. Okay. This corner is still giving me some trouble, so I'm going to put a little bit more paint there. And maybe some of the purple indigo combo. Fade that out. It's a little bit better, but you see how I interrupted this stream right here, this gold, when I um, painted across there. So to me, this doesn't feel like it's across the right um, curvy plane 
for the bubble. So I'm gonna add a little bit more there. And maybe just a touch right at the corner. Touch. Touch there. This corner is also a little bit lost, so I'm going to go in with, uh, let's see, I'll do white. A sharper white because this um, bokeh bubble behind it has some color to it, so the white should show up a little bit better than if it were on a wider circle. Okay, now we're just going to add um, a few more. Oh, <laughs> see a spot that I want to fix right here again. It's not quite the shape that I like. Now that looks like a mustache, so I'm going to <laughs> fade that out. Okay, so I'm gonna add a couple more little bokeh bubbles on. Um, ooh, light is coming in, let me close the curtain. Okay, so I'm gonna add a few more of those um, bokeh bubbles and any edges that I don't really love, I can also use this as an opportunity to cover those up. So again, you're going to just dip your sponge in your water and um, after it's already wet, sometimes I feel like it can get a little bit too soaked. So a trick you can do um, after you dip your uh, dauber in is just to um, push it into your rag a little bit. Let me pull this over. Let's see. So if you dip it in, you're like, oh no, I got way too much water. Just push it into a rag gently, and then you'll have a nice damp dauber without too much water on it. Let me grab some of the paint. I'm going to test it on my. Well, yeah. Can you see how much? Let's see. I'm not sure if you can quite see it, but there's quite a bit of water in here still. So I'm gonna daub it off on my rag. Then add a little bit more paint. Test it again. And that should be pretty good. Another thing you could do is squish it out on the plate and then with the center part, dab up more of the paint. So then the next thing I'm going to show you is you're going to take um, a thin paintbrush and you're going to get some of the bleed proof white. And this is where you can add so much sparkle. So I think this looks pretty fun um, already, but you can add a lot more with this next step. So go ahead and get your bleed proof white. And what you're going to do is add little um, sparkle rays. So you can see, um, like on this one, there's just a hint of sparkle on the edges. Um, and again, with this one, uh, it's more so the light coming through, reflecting on the other side. So that's where I tend to put more of them. I'll do a little bit other um, sparkle in other spots as a reflection of other sparkles, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to add a little sparkle here and then off the back side, a little like dot and then sparkle. This one needs to go up a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to add one here. Here. Uh, 
which is very small. So you can already see how much life that is giving these little, these little guys. It can get easy to get really um, heavy handed with these um, sparkles and so you want to have pretty light touch and start um, thicker and go thinner. So you're going to lift your brush up. Uh, let me see if I can give you an example. There's a scratch piece of paper. So you're going to um, press down and then as you pull your brush quickly, you're going to lift up like that. And that could be your little sparkle. I, I usually like to have the center one um, longer than the other ones. It seems to look a little bit better when that center one is longer. Um, this is your bubble. <laughs> so this is these are a little bit big for this bubble, um, but hopefully you can uh, get the idea. Okay, and for this very last step that we're gonna do, I'm going to grab my gel pen again, and I'm gonna make little dots um, as if they were very, very tiny bubbles. Oh, pen's a little dry. There we go. The stage can take a little while, but that's fine, especially if you're doing it for relaxation. And I'm just adding a few little dot uh, reflections on my bubble. Again, going around that general curve. And this seems a little bit sharp to me and this part isn't following that curve. So I'm just gonna go in and fix this maybe with some darker purple. in this little corner. It's getting lost. All right, back to the little bubbles. Something that uh, also helps with 
evaluating the painting that you have, seeing if there's anything that you want to change, is uh, stepping back and also taking a picture with your phone camera. Sometimes that extra perspective can help you find um, little things that you may not have noticed about your painting before. With these little bubbles, it's also helpful to um, vary the size that you're doing so you don't want them all the exact same size or spacing apart. I tend to do them in little groups and the groups that I um, make them in tend to be more linear, if that makes sense. So what I'm trying to do is create that feeling of lift towards the upper part of my painting and these little bubbles, if you mostly do them in a column or a, a line up, can help lift the eyes up of the viewer. And then if you need to add any last minute lines, you can also use your pen to add some of those lines in. And I still don't love this corner, so I'm going back in again. I'm gonna add, let's see, let's go in with more of the red. And I'm gonna add a little bit darker color on top of that. I think this is just about done. Let me look through it through the camera. Now this spot kind of bugs me a little bit, so I'm going to see if I can do something about that. Let's see. Let's try maybe some of the aqua and indigo. And I liked how that turned out. I'm going to pull some of that down to this one. All right, and we are so close. I'm just waiting for this to dry. While that is drying, let me pull my tape off and see anything left that we need to do. So when you're pulling your tape off, uh, pulling it at an angle and away from your painting will help it to not rip the paper. Like how this is looking, and this part should be 
dry now, so I'm going to go back in and add that little sparkle back in. I think that is pretty good for me. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on doing bubbles and I hope you have a great new year and if you're doing this for new year anyway. Um, and that's it. Hopefully you join me again. Uh, like and subscribe to get more videos and see you next time.